Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Uh, welcome to the latest webinar where we were able to update you on the progress around the creation of a new board within the IFRS Foundation. I'm Lee White and I have the pleasure of being the uh, Executive Director at the IFRS Foundation. Thank you for joining this webinar. In the next 45 minutes, we would like to engage you regarding the progress of our developments and next steps. How we'll do that is we will divide the webinar into two phases. The first phase, which will be for about 20 minutes, will be a presentation regarding the different elements of what we would like to present. And secondly, then we will have a, a, a Q&A session where you'll be able to put forward your questions and we'll be able to provide uh, the relevant uh, responses. And you can do that via our website where there is a sp specific element in which you can raise your questions. So without further ado, let me introduce our, our two trustees who are here today to engage with you. Uh, the first is Lucrezia Reichling. She is a professor of the London uh, Business School, chair of the European Corporate Governance Institute, non-executive of AGEAS Insurance Group, board member of Morgan Stanley International. She has a PhD in economics from the New York University. And Lucrezia joined the trustees in 2018 and is currently the chair of the trustees steering committee oversighting this work. Joining Lucrezia is Teresa Coe. She is a Freshfields China chair and founding partner of Freshfields Asia Equity Capital uh, Investors Group. She's co-chair of the Hong Kong uh, Securities Listing uh, Review Committee, deputy chair of the Securities Commission's uh, Takeover Emerges Panel. Uh, Teresa has a master's degree in law from the University of Cambridge. And she also joined the trustees in 2018. She is currently one of our two vice chairs of trustees and also serves on the IFRS steering committee as well. So uh, Teresa, may I please pass to you for the first session regarding the presentation, please. Thank you very much, Lee. And good morning to all of you. Uh, last year, and we were midway through a public consultation uh, on sustainability reporting. With climate change and sustainability being global challenges, we were often asked, isn't sustainability reporting even more important, even more relevant, and should there not be a global set of sustainability-related disclosures for investors? And should the IFRS Foundation not do something about it? To allow us to answer those questions, the trustees started a strategy review and put out a consultation paper last September. We asked, is there demand for global sustainability standard? And if so, should the IFRS Foundation play a role, which may be to establish a sustainability focus standard setting board within the IFRS Foundation. We made it very clear that it was a demand driven exercise and we were not actively seeking a role, but we are ready to serve if demand exists. The reaction exceeded our expectation. We received 577 sets of responses they were thoughtful, they were detailed, and they were very much appreciated. Even though the feedback was diverse, some clear themes emerged. There was a growing and urgent demand for global standards for sustainability-related disclosure. People wanted uh, to prioritise on climate risks, and there was broad support for the foundation to play a role. We also received some excellent feedback on the requirement for success, such as receiving a sufficient level of global support from public authorities, from global regulators, market stakeholders, including investors and preparer in key markets, and ensuring that the IFRS Foundation's mission 
and resources will not be compromised. A summary of the feedback and how the trustees have responded to the feedback is published on the IFRS Foundation website, and you're encouraged to take a look there. So based on the feedback and encouraged by statements from IOSCO, the trustees identified four key pillars which, which instructed us of the strategic direction of the potential new board. And these are the four key pillars on this slide. The first is that we will be focusing on meeting the information needs of investors. Sorry, back to the last slide, please. The second is that we don't want to start from scratch. Uh, we want to build on the excellent work that has already been done in this area by others. We are not setting up a new board to compete with others, and we are only interested in helping to consolidate, to streamline and to harmonize existing frameworks, principles and guidance to achieve global comparability, consistency and, com and completeness in sustainability reported disclosures. Our vision is to introduce a global baseline of sustainability related disclosures and to adopt a building block approach. Now, this approach is intended to be inclusive and not mutually exclusive. We do not want to constrain jurisdictions such as the EU, which wish to develop wider reporting requirements to respond to public policies or to satisfy wider stakeholders that need to go faster or further. We want to work closely with relevant stakeholders and to ensure compatibility and interoperability with other jurisdictional and international initiatives. Now, the last point is uh, self-explanatory. Climate risk is the most urgent, as we heard from our feedback. The new board will start with climate, but it will not be climate only. We will be expected to move at pace to address other sustainability related topics that are of interest to investors. May I have the next slide, please? Let me spend a few minutes on why we focus on investors. Investors and asset managers tell us a linkage between sustainability risks and opportunities and a company's business strategy and financials has never been more important. We all know that currently quality of disclosures vary between peer companies, between companies within the same industries and even within the same jurisdiction, let alone the disparity of information across jurisdiction. What information you get is sometimes left to companies themselves or more often the intensity of stewardship or activism activities. The demand for complete, consistent and reliable and auditable sustainability information has never been stronger. Now, we are also responding to the information needs of investors and capital market participants. And investors being our focus is also consistent with IFRS Foundation's existing work. And we can also leverage on our governance due process and standard uh, and global standard setting experience, which has stood the test of time. There is also the very important point of important synergies with the IASB. We are also focusing on um, enterprise value. Now, the, uh, we all know that there's been a lot of debate about whether sustainability reporting should be focused on financial materiality or the single materiality or the outside in perspective or environmental and social materiality, uh, otherwise known as the double materiality or the inside out perspective. We decided to focus on enterprise value as our key concept, which is designed to capture expected value creation for investors, not only in the short, but also medium and long term. And this is interdependent with value creation for society and environment. And I'll come back to this in a later slide to give a bit more flavor on how this concept works in practice. Now, we all, next slide, please. We all know that there are already several voluntary investors focused sustainability reporting initiatives. These include the TCFD, the Value Reporting Foundation, 
uh, which merge SASB and IRRC into a unified organization announced in November last year. The World Economic Forum's Initiative on Matrices and the Climate Disclosure Standards Board. Uh, their framework focused on climate change was first published over 10 years ago. Now, the good news is that these organizations are already committed to working together, and the group of four, together with GRI, published a prototype for climate related financial disclosure that builds on existing content in the collective framework and the TCFD recommendations. The prototype is intended to serve as a model as to what the eventual standard would look like. So the IFRS Foundation has formed a technical readiness working group to accelerate the convergence of these voluntary standards. Membership of this group includes those investor-focused organizations such as TCFD, the uh, VRF, um, CDSB, WEF, IOSCO is also an observer, and this working group will also engage closely with GRI and CDP. The idea is to provide the potential new board with a running start to develop technical recommendations for the new ISSB on the content of standards and further developing the prototype. As you know, IOSCO is also has a working group working on this, which is the technical expert group, and they are also uh, focusing on uh, ensuring that the prototype could be a sound basis for the development of the international standard under ISSB. The next slide, please. Now, let me say a little bit more about the global baseline. Uh, to tackle jurisdictional sustainability standards that are likely to be different, this diagram illustrates how the global baseline fit in. You see at the bottom left, you have the core financial statements, the IFRS standards in most cases, and the principle-based nature of our standards means that companies must already consider the effect of climate-related risk on their financial statements. The bit in the middle, you will have this global baseline of sustainability related financial disclosure for investors. Now, unlike the financial statements, company would be required to report on forward-looking sustainability matters that are reasonably possible to affect value creation over short, medium and long term. And this is what we describe as the enterprise value. Now, for example, in the middle red piece, this is where you might describe how companies should disclose the impact of climate related risks and opportunities. And for each identified risk and opportunities, the impact on its financial performance. This could include capital allocation plans, supply chain innovation, or investments in technology or new business areas. Then the larger box in gray reflects broader sustainability reporting requirements, which may include reporting against specific jurisdictional public policy objectives or reporting to stakeholders other than investors. Now, this model has a benefit of providing investors and companies with high quality, globally consistent sustainability disclosures, which are developed alongside financial statements but doing so in a way that allows jurisdictions to incorporate the relevant disclosure into their own specific requirements. Now, um, next slide, please. Now, you will see on this slide some quotes which were recently provided by IOSCO and the G7 uh, um, ministers. Uh, the global baseline approach has been welcomed, has received broad support from securities regulator around the world and also from investors and corporates and from other standard setting organizations as well. Next slide, please. 
Um, I think we need to start somewhere, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, climate risk is the most urgent and the most pressing the world faces right now. It's also the focus of the upcoming G COP26 conference. So the new board will begin with climate related disclosure, but it will be expected to move with pace to uh, consider other sustainability related matters important to existing uh, to, to investors. Next slide, please. The trustees are focused on making sure that the new board will be established with a strong governance focus and strong governance foundation. Uh, this means keeping standard setting independent of special interests and to maintain a high level of accountability to stakeholders. So to ensure that we received sufficient input from stakeholders, uh, the trustees have published some proposed amendments to our constitution. Um, in summary, we propose that the new board will have 14 uh, board members, uh, with the majority of them being full time. Uh, the ISB board, as you all know, also normally comprise 14 members. We are looking for a mixture of professional competence and relevant experience. And uh, we are also focused, we will be focused on diversity in experience as well as geographical balance. We have already um, called for nominations for the positions of chair and vice chair of the new board, and the consultation is open for public comments until the 29th, uh, 29th of July. Uh, and so please respond and, and let us have your thoughts. Now, the next slide um, shows you uh, where the new board, the ISSB, the International Sustainability Standards Board, uh, is expected to sit. Uh, as we have said, it is intended to sit alongside ISB and under the three-tier governance structure of the existing IFRS Foundation. And you will see from this slide that the IFRS Foundation is overseen by 22 trustees, uh, who in turn are accountable to a monitoring board of public authorities. Uh, the monitoring board oversees the work of the trustees and provides important linkage to many of the key public authorities around the world. Uh, the monitoring board is chaired by uh, the vice chair of IOSCO and uh, other members of the monitoring board includes uh, representatives of the EU, the Financial Services Agency of Japan, uh, US SEC, Securities Commission from Brazil and Korea, and China's Ministry of Finance as well. It is envisaged that the two boards will wor work very closely with each other, given the need for close connectivity between the financial statements and sister sustainability finan uh, related financial disclosure. Next slide, please. Now, the, this slide shows very much the work that is already uh, been happening uh, to prepare for the potential establishment of the new board. Uh, we have a trustee steering committee uh, to undertake uh, the preparatory work uh, and to provide strategic direction and assume project oversight of this potential initiative. And as uh, Lee mentioned earlier, this um, trustee steering committee is chaired by Lucrezia, who is with us today. Uh, there is also uh, a multilateral working group, which the trustees established in March of this year to begin work with IOSCO and relevant organization to explore the creation of a multi-stakeholder expert consultative committee. Now, this committee is intended to foster ongoing international coordination between uh, those um, uh, bodies which focus on enterprise value and any complementary standards relating to sustainability reporting to meet the demands of other stakeholders or jurisdictional requirements. And this committee is also intended to help to encourage global comparability interoperability 
of additional sustainability reporting requirements. And I mentioned the technical readiness working group, and you will see on this slide the membership again of uh, the representatives on this working group, and I'm not going to say more here. Uh, and, the, and the last is we have a eminence persons group, which is chaired by Jean-Claude Cruchet, um, who is uh, a, uh, a former president of the Central European Bank. And this uh, eminent persons group is established to provide strategic advice and counsel to the trustees on the proposed formation of the new board and its connectivity with jurisdictional initiatives as well. Next slide, please. On this slide, we have a timeline that we are working towards. Uh, uh, and, and, and you will see that there are now less than four months to um, COP26 conference. We have a huge amount of work ahead of us, but we remain on track to make uh, a final determination in advance of the COP26 conference. Now, I think I should say that we have received a great deal of uh, support and goodwill for this endeavor. Uh, in the words of our uh, foundation chair, Erki Lincolnden, uh, he's, he spoke recently and he said that to make this work will require political will, compromise and flexibility from all parties, including the IFRS foundation. Success is by no means certain, but if you want global sustainability related disclosure for investors, this offers a path. I think all it remains for me to say is that there is real determination amongst many of us to make this happen. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to turn to Lee, who might want to um, tell you how you can stay up to date uh, to receive um, information on, on this initi initiative and, and our way forward. So over to you, Lee. Lovely. Thank you very much, uh, Teresa. I'll let you um, uh, gather your breath and I might just come to Lucrezia in the first instance with just some questions because quite a few are already starting to come in. Um, first of all, um, if I can just clarify, uh, the uh, will be on our website um, shortly after its conclusion. So uh, I've had quite a few questions about people wanting to see if they can uh, download that later to watch it. And, and certainly the answer is yes, no, no difficulties there at all. Um, coming to you then, Lucrezia, there, there's been some themes or questions that I'm trying to group together here at the moment. The first has been about, uh, you might describe why are the trustees looking uh, to climate first or to put climate as a priority and to just bring a little bit more understanding to are they thinking about that new board to go further than climate, please? Yes, thank you, Lee, and, uh, and good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Um, yes, I mean, the, the consultation uh, uh, was uh, clear in uh, in suggesting and uh, and uh, pushing us to to start with climate uh, as uh, uh, the most urgent uh, concern for investors. And this is also supported by regulators uh, such as IOSCO and is also consistent, for example, with the recent uh, G7 recommendations. Um, now, uh, to start with climate does not mean to stop with climate, that does not mean climate only. So the consultation is also encouraging us uh, on uh, broadening uh, the scope uh, of our work uh, to the other ESG elements. And uh, uh, we, in, we will do that uh, so that uh, the new board will uh, consider the timeline for, uh, for that work, building on work which already exists as we have, are doing on climate, uh, and of course, a subject to further consultations. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, now, we've also had quite a few questions, um, Lucrezia, around the baselines of standards approach and how that fits then with what jurisdictions may be proposing to do and could you just provide some further clarity about how you see that approach 
Yes, let me just start very general. I mean, the problem we are facing here is that uh, capital markets are global. Investors look at the global, uh, you know, markets uh, and not a specific jurisdiction. So they need, uh, you know, clear uh, standards uh, for in their, you know, global work. On the other hand, uh, uh, you know, policy, uh, legal frameworks, uh, uh, you know, they are uh, related uh, to, to jurisdictions inevitably. So we cannot uh, aim at a complete homogeneous uh, uh, landscape for that reason. But what we can aim at is to have uh, a congruent, uh, congruent uh, framework. And by that, uh, I mean a baseline which uh, is global, and consistent, so it provides that uh, kind of comparability and consistency that the investor want, and that's global, which then, uh, you know, can accommodate top up, so or different level of ambitions uh, at the level of the jurisdictions. What is important here is that the jurisdiction standards uh, are not totally, you know, incompatible with the baseline. So this is the concept of interoperability that uh, Teresa mentioned. And um, so it's basically, uh, the, I mean, the, the word is interoperability of you want uh, congruence, so baseline with a top up, which builds from that a possibly different level of ambitions. Of course, uh, uh, to achieve that, uh, we need uh, to have, uh, you know, consultations on a regular basis uh, with the different jurisdictions and with the stakeholders. And this is one of the reasons why we are establishing and we're envisaged also in our governance uh, to have a multi-stakeholder, you know, working group, uh, which would, uh, uh, you know, facilitate uh, this work uh, of, uh, um, you know, of work, this cooperation, if you want, at, at a global level. Lovely. Thank you again, Lucrezia. A, a few questions, one of which I think I can answer, which has come in saying in, res in regards to the responses to the proposed changes to the Constitution, will those responses be made public? And uh, the answer to that is um, all of the responses that we receive um, regarding the consultation on the Constitution uh, will certainly be uploaded onto our website shortly after we receive them. And so there is certainly a link there that people will be able to follow in regards to any responses received. Uh, another question, perhaps I might come to you on this one, Lucrezia. Um, and I think it's bringing some clarity and it's further extension in a way of the, the baseline uh, approach. But there's questions coming in about mandatory status of standards and 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 what do, what who would make them mandatory? Yes, uh, of course there is a uh, um, there is a lot of you know the IOSCO and others have made the point that standards should be made mandatory, and uh, you know this is uh, is obviously useful. Also. to the IFRS, uh, to the sun. the case uh, for financial standards. I think we may have just lost you for a minute or, or, or so then, Lucrezia, but I think uh, your key message there was very much we're working with different groups, but it's in others' hands as to whether they're mandatory or not. Exactly, yes. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, Teresa, if I, uh, I may come to you, and uh, there's been some questions coming in about next steps and looking towards COP26. And so there's some questions which have come through about um, the appointments or potential appointments of chair and vice chair and asking uh, are the trustees or do the trustees expect to have those announcements at or, at or before COP26? Well, we have the openness to receive um, nominations for both the positions of the chair and the vice chair. Um, and I think we, we, we certainly will be working very hard to um, 
result in a position that we can make some announcements before COP26. I think that is the intention, that is the direction of travel. But ultimately, we will just have to see um, whether you know there is uh, there is uh, the, you know we we want to we 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 want to make sure that we uh, we do this right, even though that uh, you know we 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 understand that we want to. Um, do this as quickly as is possible, and there is a high-level sense of urgency. So that is that is the intention. Lovely, thank you, uh, Teresa. Um, Lucrezia, there's been some questions around um, coming from the slides about the building upon the work of others and the technical readiness working group, and particular reflections around how much or what the nature of that work coming from the group. So would you be able to perhaps share just a little bit more information from the technical readiness working group, please? Yes, I mean, these groups, uh, you know, has a um, different level of uh, engagement. So we have uh, monthly strategic meetings. So then we have uh, some uh, operational and technical meetings. Uh, uh, every fortnight and then uh, uh, working uh, uh, groups, you know, weekly working level meetings. So it's quite, uh, you know, an intense uh, uh, work. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the strategic meetings, uh, the work streams are uh, technical. So organizational matters. Um, and uh, you know, Teresa already mentioned uh, who are the which are the organizations involved. Uh, um, but you know, the idea is really to you know to prepare the the ground for for the new board to start working. Of course, without uh, interfering with the independence uh, that the new board will have to have. But is a running start. Okay, that's the key word. Understood. Thank you. And there is a follow up which. Um, naturally comes from this uh, uh, Lucrezia, which is around do the trustees have some sense of indicative timeline as to when there may be a first standard uh, published on climate? Well, I mean, uh, uh, there has been, uh, uh, you know, an ambition also supported by IOSCO to, to be ready by mid 2022. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we have to be balanced uh, because there is a sense of urgency which uh, actually came uh, loud and clear from the consultation. But, uh, you know, we have to also to have due process, uh, which uh, is part of actually of the credibility of our organization. Lovely, thank you. Uh, Teresa, there's comments that have come in saying during your presentation there was reference to engagement with IOSCO at different points. Are, are you able to share a bit more about the working relationship between the Foundation and IOSCO, please? Um, yes, I think uh, there is, um, there, I think the the engagement exists at different level. I think through the uh, chair of the monitoring board, and uh, and also uh, between the, the 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 technical uh, working group, they have a technical expert group, and we have a technical readiness group, and also through the uh, deputies of the. Uh, members of the monitoring board. I think there are regular and ongoing engagements between these various bodies to make sure that we are uh, uh, that, that 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 you know the, the comments from each other are 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 are, are reflected and and taken on board. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, Next one is um, regarding funding, Lucrezia, and some reference to some recent statements by the trustees about welcoming offers of C capital. Would you be able to provide any any further detail around that? Yes, I mean, I think here the important thing, uh, the important message is that, uh, of course, to start, uh, we'll need some seed capital, but at the same time, uh, a requirement for success is also to make sure that our permanent uh, source of funding uh, 
will be secure. So these are two different streams of um, of uh, you know of work from uh, you know we had two different uh, um, stream of work from our side and uh, on seed capital uh, we uh, are going to have a process in which we will consider uh, expression of interest uh, from different jurisdictions uh, oh, uh, and so this is what we recently communicated lovely thank you very much um Teresa, there was a question just reiterating about the three tiers of governance and asking whether there was any proposed variation to that governance uh, coming from any of the, the, the responses. So I think I might say, you know, we're still in sort of an early phase in getting responses back to any any changes in the, the constitution, but that's really an area that um, uh, is for others outside of the trustees. But I'm not sure if you'd like to reflect anything more about the three tiers of governance. No, I think you're absolutely right. I think we believe that the three tier structure has stood the test of time. I think uh, it's been it's been around for 20 years since the IFRS was first established, and uh, over time we have actually strengthened it. So we are putting it out to the public to see whether they do believe that any uh, modifications or adjustments is needed, and we will be um, waiting for the responses from the from 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 all our key stakeholders to uh, see whether they agree with us or whether you know some suggestions should should be should be considered. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, Lucrezia, some comments coming in or questions about um, how will the trustees or the new board balance moving at pace, but also with appropriate due process? And this is what uh, what I just referred to, the, okay. to my, my my answer to the to the to the question before. So, as you can see from what Teresa described, uh, we are working. Uh, at a very rapid pace, <laughs> but uh, we are aware that we have a capital of reputation uh, uh, which we have built over the years, uh, and this is our most precious uh, uh, good, if you want, yes. asset. And uh, therefore, okay, on the you know the principle of balance uh, is important. Thank you. Uh, the next question, and we've had a couple on this, has been around. The, the approach of the new board around proportionality. Many refer back to the SME uh, work that the current uh, that the ISB has been doing. And is that a similar proposal for the new board? Now, obviously, that's in the hands of the new board, but there's an interest around this proportionality. Yes, I mean, uh, definitely the principle of proportionality. I mean, we have, a, you know, the ISB has a good experience uh, in addressing reporting for SMEs. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, this is likely to be leveraged by, by the new board. Uh, but remember that, uh, you know, it's only the jurisdictions uh, that have uh, the power, the ability to set the disclosure requirements. Uh, so this is true for financial reportings and uh, is going to be true also for sustainability. Thank you. Um, uh, Teresa, I'm conscious uh, our time's moving very quickly. Um, there was questions coming through when they saw the visual of the three tiers of governance and the two boards, the ISB and, and the proposed board sitting side by side. Are there any insights you could share at this time about how the interconnectivity may may develop between the two boards? Um, I think this is also something that we'll have to. We, we don't want to preempt the 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 mechanism that will need to be established uh, between the two boards to. Uh, ensure that there is synergy between the 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 works of the of the two boards and that the financial statements and uh, the you know sustainability reporting disclosures can speak to each other so obviously i think as part of the running start process i think there will be suggestions and 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 we are also open to kind of any feedback that the 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 our key stakeholders will have for us but ultimately, I think we will have to 
um, leave it to the new board when they are established and up and running to kind of finalize all the all the protocol and 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 the actual details of the mechanism. Understood. Thank you, Teresa. We are also aware that the ISB is currently undertaking its agenda consultation. And we think through some of the feedback that 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 board may receive, particularly in an area like intangibles, there will be a very interesting uh, connectivity with that type of um, topic with those two boards. Now, that's obviously, as you said, rightfully has to play out between the two boards and how they approach it. But you could certainly see a flow of um, information and engagement both ways on a topic such as such as that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of the time, so I think we may, uh, there are some few more questions coming in, particularly around, can you outline the next five years of timeline, what that may look like? And I, I, I think whilst we may all have aspirations, we may not tackle that in a level of detail uh, for, for, for this session, uh, but understand the desire that people are, are very much keen to see what the, the, the future in the medium term may look like. Uh, so if I may just ask uh, my colleague to put up a slide, please. Um, we referred to this earlier when Teresa was uh, concluding her remarks. If those on this uh, that you can take in order to do that, uh, please come on to our website, ifrs.org, um, sign in or register, which is fairly easy to do. Um, move to setting follows and set your slider to green on sustainability and you will be able to then get all the regular updates. Uh, again, just to make it really clear, those that wish to see this recording of this webinar, it will be shortly available on our website after uh, we conclude. And equally back to that question about seeing responses that come into um, the current consultation on our constitution. All of those are also available on our website as well. So may I just take this opportunity to um, thank uh, in particular Lucrezia and Teresa for making their time available and for all the work they've been doing on our uh, steering committee. Thank you very much for your time and thank you as well to the foundation staff who've been able to make this webinar uh, work and we will also have one later today to make sure we capture all the right time zones. So thank you all and um, I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you.